Yeah, uh, I'm the licence holder, got the licence last year. Uh, Repeat has been up there a couple of years. Um, it was at the old power station at Corby, uh, but it all, the antenna fell to bits and it just generally fell into a bit of disrepair. Right, so today we're looking at the Radtel 880G. There is also a Radtel 880, that's a different model, same radio, but this one has GPS. In the box you get a base charger, USB cable, cable programming wire, strap and a belt clip. And this will transmit on 11 meters, 10 meters, 2 and 70 and 1.25, very, very low power. And it only transmits on FM. And uh, go and check out uh, Electro Bananas Harmonics test. He did a test. He was using the 880, not the G. And um, the mentioned bands above were usable, but not perfect. But they were usable. I think two meters came out very well. But uh, this radio is GPS and APRS. They are available in the optional, in the advanced settings. If you press menu and go to the top and go up one, you've got extended, optional, and you've got GPS and APRS there. And uh, I have used it on APRS. It does work. It does need some work. And um, I have seen people getting good results with it. And there's lots of firmware coming out all the time. And I wouldn't buy this radio just for APRS. But it looks promising. And um, so this has got three lines on the display. I've got the top line set up as VFO so I can tune about. I've got the second line for channels and I've got the third line for APRS. And if I switch APRS it beacons out every so many seconds. You can change it. And um, you can set the working mode for each line. So I've got line A 64 to 2, uh, 620 megahertz and you can set a different working mode for each line and uh, yeah this has a HF SSB receiver in it I've set one of the pre uh, the key definable keys to do the HF I think I did this one long press the bottom uh, preset button there's two presets on the side and transmit long press that and it start, starts up the FM radio type receiver. Now, I say FM radio, that's what it was on originally. And see the signal meter is moving. I wouldn't say it's a proper signal meter, but it's not just all the way over or nothing. Um, it says the signal there. And in the working mode at the top, it says 2 megs to 30 megs lower sideband. I've set a preset for 40 meters and I've set one for 20, which is upper sideband. And you can cycle through these different parts using the star button in the bottom left. So you can go, you can change the channel, the step. I've got it on one kilohertz, the bandwidth three, the gain. I've got it on AGC, the BFO. So you can scan up and down um, these different settings and alter them manually. And if you press the... I had trouble getting any sideband out of it originally. And I messaged Andreas and what... The bottom right button. If you press this, it cycles through different modes here. So it's 2 to 30 megs if I press that. 
it's gone 2 to 30 megs up a sideband. The other one was LSB. Press it again, CW, press it again, we're back to LSB. And if you long press it, it cycles through different things like long wave, medium wave, and different band plans. And um, so that's the SSB. And I think it's a bit like the SIS radios. I can't see any any information on what chip it's got in it but it, it sounds like an s radio an s sis radio when you get that um whooshing noise when you change frequency so it's a nice color screen very nice screen um, 1024 channels it does have zones they're not scan lists it's got two antenna sockets on the top the one on the left is for transmit i'll just zoom out a little bit so it's got two antenna sockets on the top. The left one is for transmit only. You know, transmit and receive. That's what 2 and 70 would be on. That's what a 10 meters and 11 would be on. And I use a, a telescopic for them. And there's another antenna socket underneath this plug. I thought this was a channel selector. I wish it did have a channel selector. If I take that off, there's a, a metal... There's an SMA underneath it. You, I'll just lift it up so you can see it. There's an SMA there, and that's like the ICOM type that's actually sticking out. The one um, on the left here is the opposite type. There's a hole in the radio that, that an antenna like that fits into. And so it's VHF. On VHF and UHF, you can listen on AM and FM on receive. So we've said it's got FM radio, long wave, medium wave and short wave in AM. And it's got a very nice colour scope. So I'll just show you that quickly. I've programmed the top button to bring the scope up. So I'm on this line here going to go down a line to the middle one that's my all-star node there so if I if I press the top button that brings up the scope and you've got two different types of scope I'm just going to uh, get uh, out of that glare so it's got two different types of scope You've, if you long press the bottom right button, the hash button, you've got scanning mode where it just goes off and you can see the, the peaks on the waterfall. You don't hear any audio and if you long press it again, you get monitor mode and you can actually hear audio. And I was wondering what the difference is. On the monitor mode, if you try and move away using the up and down, it keeps coming back. But if you go to scanning mode, you can go, you can move away from it and it doesn't keep going back to it. And you can change various parameters in the scope. If you press the star button in the bottom left, you can cycle between the frequency, which is in green, or the space, that's the, like the bandwidth of the waterfall of the scope. I've got it on 100k and that gives me 10 megahertz so you can see here it's going from 426 to 436 press it again you can alter the squelch threshold and press it again you're back to the frequency and if, if you um, if you press the green button on this radio it goes through the different modes so I'll go back to FM and uh, that's about it I think the uh, the scope feature has changed a bit to what's actually in the manual so I'm, I'm still playing with the scope and um, right just looking at my notes it's got this key define is very good you've got two presets on the side and you can also change all of the num all of the number buttons to uh, 
to do a particular feature. You know, I can't go through every menu item, but I'm trying to highlight some of the uh, the really good things on this radio. So you've got multi press to talk, side key one, long and short, side key two, long and short, alarm key, that's the top one, and you've got the number buttons here, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, you can program lots of features on these uh, on these keys in key define. It's USB C charging, which is very handy. This is also known as an I radio. But uh, this is the Radtel version, and I think the iRadio has GPS models and non-GPS. So check the harmonics in your area, in your country, whether it's legal to transmit. I'm not going to say whether you can or you can't, but it, ap it appears promising on uh, on 10... I'm, I mean, I'm just going to try it on 10 metres, and... Um, I haven't, I'm not going to do it yet because I haven't got the equipment to test it. But this is like an overview looking at all the cool features on the, uh, on the Radtel. Right, so I'm out in the mobile, bit of a noisy location, and I'm just going to put a call out on uh, GB3CO. It's a new repeater, well, it's at a new location. 2E0 UKH uh, listening on GB3CO. Yes, 2E0 UKH, this is uh, G1JSP. Uh, nice to uh, be on air, Chris. Um, take you around the brown car somewhere. Back to you. Yeah, I'm just mobile, and um, for anyone that doesn't know, Jimbo is the repeater keeper of GB3CO. Uh, just tell us in, you know, 10 seconds about the repeater, how high it is, or um, whereabouts it is, roughly. Yeah, uh, I'm the licence holder, got the licence lead on it, and uh, repeater's been up there a couple of years. Um, it was at the old power station in Corby, uh, but it all, the antenna fell to bits, and it just generally fell into a bit of disrepair. Um, the power station's closing, so we have to find a new site. RS Components at Corby were very, very, very kind in offering us uh, space on top of the, one of their buildings of which we uh, installed all the gear um, a couple of months ago. Um, got a new repeat unit because the old one was very, very tired and horrid. Uh, so it's a Tate 7100 um, is the repeater itself. Um, big server cabinet up in uh, on the fourth floor of the RS Components. Um, uh, Reports are good and bad at the minute. Um, we can get out uh, north, south, west, uh, east, west is a bit difficult. To, but it's been on air now and it seems to work okay. Uh, not much use. CI will be moving, so that's GB3 CI. That'll be moving very soon because, again, the power station has been decommissioned. And uh, therefore, uh, that'll go to RS components as well. Anyway, I think that's enough. Uh, 